let's get moving. And not just let's get moving, but let's feel safe and comfortable moving in the bodies that we have. It's not about weight loss. It's not about getting jacked, like you said. It's just about, again, regaining control over your body if you didn't have it before. The vast majority of adults don't do any form of strength training. Like, zilch, zero, zip. And until very recently, that included yours truly. And I have a lovely gym in my building, like four stories that way. And I still wasn't going in there. I just wouldn't do it. I've become really interested in how to parlay my love of cycling into more of a longevity play. How might I live better because I'm physically fit because of the sport I love. There is no substitute for lifting heavy weights. You can do all the cycling you want. It will not provide the strength training that you need. So this year I waved the white flag and I decided I'm gonna start strength training. And now I'm six months in, but the way I was going to approach it was all wrong, like completely wrong. But luckily a friend put me on to a company called Move Daily and my strength coach, Roshan Chopra, who we're going to talk to today in today's interview. And they really provided a process. And I think it's so important for people in your 50s, your 60s, your 70s, and even in your 80s to approach it the right way so we don't end up injured. So that's what we're gonna talk about today with Roshan. And just to give you a little bit of background on him, he is a Canadian athlete, he was a gymnast, and then he went on to perform with Cirque du Soleil in Vegas. How cool is that? He has a degree in psychology. He's an animal flow master instructor, and we're gonna get into what that's all about in the interview. But without further ado, let's jump in. Here's a crazy stat. The most recent survey of people, mm -hmm. 17 to 19% say that they do strength training. But it's even more interesting to hear like the, con the converse number, like 82% of, of adults are not doing any form of strength training, mm -hmm. which I find really shocking. Maybe that's gonna change because of all the longevity stuff that's coming out right now. Knowing what I know now, that you could tune in and say, here's what to do. Mm -hmm. It's an approach. Here's an approach to strength training after 50. I thought what a, a good way to start this off was with my boneheaded assumptions <laughs> about what was gonna happen. Okay. Okay, you, you down with that? <laughs> yeah, Okay. Go for it. <laughs> so first of all, I always thought, I'm a mountain biker. I have to do these rooty, rocky climbs. Some of them are like 20%. That is both cardio and strength training. I'm done. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all in one. Yeah. So the more I listen to these podcasts and I'm reading these books, I was like, I got to do this because it's so correlated mm -hmm. with longevity. Yep. And also, you know, like I want the intervening years to be really good. So I went, okay, for God's sake, I'll do strength training. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so then I reach out to Move Daily, mm -hmm. the company that you work with. And I, in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm gonna spend about 350 bucks. I'm gonna come in once, twice maximum. You're gonna tell me what to do, show me a couple of things, and mm -hmm. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna peace out and go to the gym in my building, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so. None of that happened, and it did not play out that way, and thank goodness that it didn't. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could explain, like, it's not called, you know, get jacked, you're the company you work with. Absolutely not. It's no. called move daily. So maybe yeah. you can kind of tell us a little bit about the philosophy you guys approach people like me coming to you. Well... <clears throat> Move Daily is just that. We're just trying to get pe empower people to move, right? Because like you said, a lot of the population doesn't even do that. So regardless of strength training, it's just let's get moving. And not just let's get moving, but let's feel safe and comfortable moving in the bodies that we have. So it's not about weight loss. It's not about getting jacked, like you said. It's just about, again, regaining control over your body if you didn't have it before. Maybe you're coming off an injury. Maybe you're coming off a very sedentary lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And it's time to just get you moving. So we're just there to help empower people to move in their own bodies. I just feel safe and comfortable being in their own bodies. 
Do you get many people over 50 beginning their strength Everyone training? and anyone. Yeah, we get tons of people. But over 50 could mean someone that is in quote unquote shape, who is more fit than a 20 year old. We get 20 year olds that are completely not fit or not fit as right. some 70 year olds. So I, I, I get the number that we want to throw out there like, oh, it's over 50, but it, it all depends on who's coming in and what background they're coming in with and what like what athletic background or not athletic background or any type of background that they're coming in with. With the people who are like 40 or 50 plus in their 50s, 60s, 70s, mm -hmm. are they entering strength training because they have a problem or is it more proactive and it's like, I gotta, I gotta do something good for myself? I wouldn't say that there's one reason that they do that. It could be they have never done it. It could be that they've been doing it for so long but they haven't been seeing the progression they want to see. It could be that they've been told they need to start doing this for long-term health and injury prevention. So there's no one thing or one reason why they do it. It's just like there's no one reason why people under 50 don't do it. It just it could be anything and everything in that sense. One of the obstacles for me is that a day that I'm in the gym is a day that I can't be on my Peloton or my bike in the good weather. Yeah. And so you've got to carve out, I think there's just a mental thing that you've got to start carving out time for this other aspect. Yeah, for sure. It does take away from something that you were doing before, but that break can also give you a lot of um, time to recover from the mountain biking as well, right? Right. So if that's your one thing and you're doing something else, you're giving yourself time off to recover for the thing that you like to do. Right. There's a climb. One of my favorite places to ride here in Ontario mm -hmm. has a couple of like really awful climbs. <laughs> they feel like they go on forever. They're really steep. They're rooty. They're rocky. They're technical. Yeah. And if you hear the audio when I'm doing this climb, I feel like I'm coughing up a lung. Okay. But this time, that's my, my benchmark every year. Will mm -hmm. I make that climb? And this year, mm -hmm. I texted you and I said, I have a new gear. And the new gear helped the cardiorespiratory part of it because all of a sudden, I had a strength in my legs mm -hmm. that I did not have before. And so that was like, oh, that was a revelation because it's now contributing to the, my sport that I like to do. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So it's such, a, it's such a net gain. And now I realize that, you know, I really was boneheaded. <laughs> I, would, <laughs> I wouldn't say boneheaded. boneheaded. Just, there's <laughs> no, just a, really. lot of, a lot of, not misinformation, but there's a lot of uh, no information for people out there. Or sometimes it's too much information. And once you really get into it, then you see the benefits rather than, oh, I'm only going to do it for, it's only going to be this, this much of my life or just this much. Right. I'm only going to need this much, right? But now I don't want to miss a day. Yep. Absolutely. I don't want to miss a day now because I'm seeing, it takes time and we'll get into that. So, okay, let's jump to phase one in our journey together. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't think that Freya at, move daily was gonna like take me on saying here's 300 bucks tell me what to do and I'm out of here <laughs> so phase one in our journey together was the intake form yeah. can you kind of describe uh, that form and what you're looking for in it uh, the intake form is pretty extensive as you saw I think mm -hmm. it's three or three or four pages and it covers basically your entire lifestyle not just <clears throat> Not just your uh, movement history, but also your day-to-day -day life, what you eat, um, how much you're sleeping, all that stuff, because all that goes into your health history. Uh, the, the other thing the intake form does is it gives us a good picture coming in to the assessment. So the assessment we have maybe 60 to 90 minutes to get done. So that intake form cuts down on a lot of that time. So we see part of the picture before we even see you. So we have a little bit of an understanding of what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, there's everything from eczema to bowel movements in there. <laughs> it's, like I said, it's pretty extensive. It is. Yeah. But, you know, I think, I think one part of this, it did take a little while to fill out, but it really made me think about, because one of it is, one of the sections is about goals and purpose. Mm -hmm. And it really made me get clear on why are you doing this? What yeah. do you want to get out of it? And so for me, that will help me understand what success looks like when and if I get there. Exactly. Right? I think the biggest thing with the why is 
some people have will take weight loss for an example but the why of the weight loss sometimes isn't enough it's not intrinsic enough to really get to that goal but if you have something like i want to be pain free and i want to be as injury free as possible for as long as possible now that why is pretty deep can be deeper and that will lead to the weight loss hopefully if that's one of your goals but that why because it's so much deeper will let you train for that goal longer right yeah i went back and i looked at what i initially put as my goals and purpose actually <laughs> and so i i had graded the whole like if it makes me better at my sport mm -hmm. that's great but not a not a necessity and it is totally has mm -hmm. and now looking back i go i would have ranked that as a bigger priority had you known right mm -hmm. i thought i was kind of already there <laughs> No. <laughs> There's always that next gear. <laughs> so is there anything in that form that would ever be like a real warning sign for you guys that might have you say, I don't know, I don't think you're ready for this? Um, not really. I, I think like if, if there's, when it comes to something like that, it would have to be something that the three of us don't have experience with. So if we see something that the health history that is extensive enough or maybe we'll call, we'll call it complicated enough that we don't have experience with it, we'd have to refer out in that case. Mm -hmm. um, but we usually generally just see it, use it for to see, um, well, not red flags, but we'll call them flags in case right. of, of just what's going on in your day to day. So like if you're not sleeping, let's say we want to, <clears throat> you want to pack on a ton of muscle just for, mm -hmm argument's sake but you're not seeing that result but your sleep habits are zero you're getting right. three to four hours of sleep every night mm -hmm. well that's that tells us you just can't recover so there's no you can't get what you want because you're not getting right. sleep so, so that's what, like one of the things we use the intake form for in that case okay so let me throw you an example an extreme example <laughs> because when you when you think about it, they've done, there are studies that show and they've, they've gone into nursing homes and got people doing some strength training mm -hmm. with small weights. And they've had people move from bedridden to chairs, chairs to walkers, the people on walkers start to walk free of any device. Mm -hmm. And so the point is, it's never too late, right? Nope. So let's take somebody like my mom. She's 83. She's mm -hmm. got osteoporosis. Otherwise, she's like really good she good balance pretty mobile given except for like the osteoporosis creates some immobility here mm -hmm. in their garden can somebody of that age start to work with people like you to improve some of their mobility challenges and absolutely build a bit more strength i uh, yep you you would just have to scale it to their capacity. So that's what we always try and do, right? As you saw with you and Glenn, there's a huge, there was a huge difference at the beginning where we started. He mm -hmm. started in a completely different spot than you did with different movements than you did, even though we were training together. So with someone, and that's, we'll call it an extreme case like your mother, um, the movements would be just completely different than what we give someone else. So client right. A is completely different than client B to client C. So, but there's, like you said, it's never too late. You just start with, a, everybody starts with a different capacity. So that brings us really to the second phase in the journey, and that's the assessment. And I think we spent, like, it was the both of us, but we spent at least 90 minutes with you. I think it was 90 because there was two of you, yeah. 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 So can you describe what that is for the people who weren't here, which is everybody ever? Yeah, the, <laughs> the assessment is like a movement intake form, we'll say. Mm -hmm. So it was... A, about 45 minutes of movements and they're very small they're very easy there's nothing not like a, it's not like a beep test where you're running back and forth right. or anything like that uh, just movements to see what your bodies are doing at that time so whether or not we have any ranges that are painful any ranges that are hard to get into um, maybe your squat patterns or hinge patterns need to be cleaned up or we don't they're non-existent to begin with so we're going to have to start a little bit start at a different spot to teach those patterns that kind of thing so basically just how are you moving today and what do i need to do to help your movement so that you stay injury free and pain free 
right? And that's like top to bottom that yeah. you looked at. Yeah. It, right down to just like walking too. Mm -hmm. You filmed us walking just to, I guess, look at our gait and yeah. how. Just to see how that we wanted to see how the heel, uh, the foot was landing, and to see how the let's see if and how the big toe was pushing off the ground. So you know, we we're talking about my mom and where she's at and where we're at. Glenn came in with a dislocated, an old shoulder. It's not, it's fine, but like obviously that's kind of lingered. I had a high hamstring mm -hmm. issue that plagued me for years that I was terrified that I would reignite. And, um, and it's only become better, I have to say. What I've really learned is that by doing this, and mm -hmm. you're looking at everything, and I assume that you go away and look at all the video and photos that you yeah. took, and then you come back with almost like a prescription, a physical That's prescription, exactly what it is. Yeah. a plan for us, right? And so the big thing I learned is that there was no way I was just gonna go on YouTube. <laughs> and like find some, you know, exercises and I'll do this and that, that looks good. And, and quite frankly, if I came to a gym like Fortis here in Toronto mm -hmm. and I walked through the door without any <laughs> guidance, it would be incredibly intimidating. Yeah, it, it can be. I mean, any gym, but <laughs> this one can be a little intimidating sometimes, yeah. You know, and it, like it's a great place to be. I, yeah. I, I love it here. It's one of my favorite gyms in the entire city. Yeah, yeah. it's great. But like without any guidance, mm -hmm. you'd really be at a loss to know what to do, whether you're at home, in your buildings gym, or a gym like this. So mm -hmm. I think one of the critical things that I learned is that every plan is different and it's really based on that initial intake form and your assessment where you are. Everybody comes in with a different history. So, like I said before, with client A, B, and C, they're all starting at different points, and they all have they all bring different things to the table. So you you mentioned injury history, sure, but some people have different fear involved in each one of those injuries. So like mm -hmm. between you two, Glenn, zero didn't think about a shoulder at all, whereas you were thinking about the hamstring quite a bit yeah. for the first like six to eight sessions. Right, it was very focused on no, this is gonna hurt, this is gonna. So you yeah. have to start people in completely different spots in that sense as well. So not just like starting them with the right movements, but with the right approach to the fear they have around those movements as well. Sometimes, sometimes right. they don't have anything at all. Sometimes there's no injury history. Sometimes there's the movements are all great and all gravy. And you're like, okay, we're this is easier. My, my, my life is easy here in this sense. I'm just showing you regular old movements instead of having to start you in a certain spot. For many of the exercises that you chose and that have evolved over time, mm -hmm. we started several of them with no weight at all, yeah. just to learn proper movement pattern. And it took weeks to learn some of those foundation, like hip hinging. Yeah. Um, so can you, can you talk about the importance of not just walking into a gym and picking up a weight. Mm -hmm. And especially as you get older, because a lot of us, especially if we're active in a sport, mm -hmm. we are at this point carrying around an injury or two with us. For sure. Uh, so yeah, you can just come into a gym and pick up a weight and throw it around. It's not, a lot of people do that, but they're gonna get, they're gonna injure themselves usually more often than not. So what we do is we start with just teaching patterns. So the squat or deadlift pattern are big, big patterns for people to use that they use quite a bit, right? Like that's what your hips are designed to do. That's what your knees and hips are designed to do in the squat. So in your specific example, uh, we had Glenn doing deadlifts, I think day one or day two, his pattern for the hinge was a little bit different. So we talked about the fear that you had over the hamstring injury to begin mm -hmm. with, right? So with you, we started with the single leg deadlift so you could feel comfortable just balancing getting into the hinge and allowing the hamstring to stretch just that little bit and then come back up so we patterned you a little bit differently than we patterned glenn but yes sometimes you have to start with no weight just to teach those full patterns before you get the weight on there especially with the goblet squat or something something like that where you have <clears throat> the person learning just to stay well to come down to the box because we started with on the box and tap and come back up and come down with those two parallel lines. Remember the, the torso's in one parallel line and the shins are 
trying to be in the other parallel line. So just learning that pattern before we can weight something up and learning how to brace. Because otherwise, the injuries occur too quickly, too soon, or right. can occur too quickly, too soon. Like the deadlift, there's a lot going on there. To this day, I'm like, I'm really thinking through mm -hmm. every single deadlift rep that I do. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah, it's really good. So I was talking to my sister and you know, her question, I said, what would you ask if I could ask any questions? And she said, well, is it one size fits all? Can I kind of jump in with, and obviously we've already covered that, but she said, cause my back's a little sore. <laughs> and so like the last thing I'd want to see her doing is beginning to do deadlifts right. without any kind of adult supervision absolutely so no it is you're, like we just like we talked about it is absolutely not one size fits all everybody gets something different okay let's go through the 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 stages again so mm -hmm. first it was the intake form then you did the movement assessment yeah and then we signed on to do 12 sessions over 12 weeks with you and mm -hmm. then we have days on our own yeah. in our own gym so we're on, this is our 20th anniversary did you know that Congratulations. <laughs> so how often should people's strength training workouts change over time? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> it's like a lot, of, a lot of answers I've given you today. It all depends. It's like everybody's a little bit different. Some, people's, some people might like a little bit more variety and mm -hmm. it keeps them more engaged. Um, other people want to be doing the same thing for a little bit longer. And you're, so the changes you make to the program might not be wholesale. They might just be like, okay, we're gonna up, maybe change the amount of sets we're doing within this program three or four times. We might change the amount of reps we're doing. We might add a little bit of weight, whatever it might be. There's just changing the stimulus just a, just a right. little bit. Other times we're just keeping it the same because we need to get someone's pattern down. So the weight or the sets might not change, the reps might not change. We're just making sure that the patterning is happening over and over and over again. So nothing changes for a very long time. Right. Just stimulus. to make sure that that happens. Yeah, that yeah. stimulus happened with me big time because yeah. you changed one thing and suddenly I had DOMS, that delayed onset muscle soreness. Mm -hmm. It was real. It was legit. Yeah. It was like one different thing in legs. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I was kind of hobbled <laughs> in a good way. And then is it up to the client at that point to sort of feel like, okay, this is getting a little too easy. So I'll add five pounds on to, to whatever it is that I'm doing. Um, I, it depends on, again, it all, it all depends. Some clients will say, sure, I can add it on. Others will it's my job to do that because they don't want to. It's all, right. It, 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 it all depends. I, I generally try and say, for the most part, you want to be within like that three to five rep. Uh, whatever you finish your set, you want to have like that three to five reps in your tank. Right. Kind of thing. So if you're, to, that is to say, if you're saying do 10 to 12, mm -hmm. and on 10 I'm utterly failing, I, I might be a little too, too high. Much. Yeah. yeah. Something, something's off there. So you either have to reduce the amount of reps you're doing or you have to reduce the amount of weight you're using. Right, Yeah. okay. So we focus, we have focused a lot on things that um, make our backs and shoulders stronger. I'm gonna say like bring our shoulders back. I don't know if I'm articulating this <laughs> the right way. Close enough, I think, I think the viewers are gonna get that. <laughs> yeah. But I think, I think that's gotta be good for a lot of people, right? Because so many of us are like hunched over a desk all yeah. day long. I mean, we even if you're not at a desk, we, we're humans, we live our lives in the front, right? We don't live behind. So all of us are going to be somewhat like this in, as we continue to live our lives. So what we do is try and, or what I do is just try and program enough things that are happening like for the back, shoulders, and the back of the body to counteract some of those day-to-day -day act activities that are the way we live our lives day-to-day. -day. That's what we've been doing. Yeah, I'm feeling the difference of that. Like I am feeling my back engage and it's just, it feels different now. You know, it's such a good way. I remember asking you one question. I said, are we going to do like bicep curls at some point? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I don't know. It just seems like that's the thing everybody does. But that <laughs> leads me to my next question, which is something that I've learned from you and that I don't even know if I'm even asking the question properly, but like compound movements, like you said, you are doing, 
he said, you are doing biceps along with this, 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 and this. Yeah. So can you speak to that? So we, I think a, like a more old school mentality of fitness is like doing what we quote unquote isolation exercises. So like mm -hmm. a bicep curl is really just like, we're really using the bicep or we're focusing on using the bicep. Right. Everything, like other things are moving as well, but you're focusing on using that bigger muscle group here. But when we talk about a compound exercise, that means there's two more joints moving at once. So like a squat or a deadlift would be a compound exercise because the knees and the, the hips are moving at the same time. Right. So in that specific example of you were using your biceps, when we were talking about doing rows, so any type right. of pulling exercise. So like, right. let's say a chin up, your main movers are your back muscles, your secondary movers are the biceps. So you're, yes, you're getting, you're, you're hitting two big groups of muscles in that case. Right. And so bang for your buck while, while you're with me, since you're paying money to be here, I don't need to be watching you do bicep curls. Right. In my opinion. Um, I can watch you do a bigger movement, like a, a chin up, that's gonna help carry over to other day-to-day -day activities, like helping your scaps and things like that. Yeah. And still get your, hit your biceps in that sense as well. I'm not at a chin up yet. <laughs> okay. I'm not even at a from the toes push up yet. It'll get there one day. One but day. you know, that bring, this is a really good segue into my next question, which is, I think people need to set expectations, right? Mm -hmm. I don't care I if I ever look jacked. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't care about that. A little less fat percentage would be amazing. That would be good. I, I'm not, like, very focused on that, though. I'm focused on, like, legit strength. Mm -hmm. But it takes time, right? And so I think two things really strike me is that I am signing on for strength training for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. This is, I'm in it now for the long haul. Yeah. This isn't like we're doing 12 weeks and then I'm done. Yeah. Like, so in that way, you've got time to acquire that strength, right? Oh, absolutely. The strength, at the, especially at the very beginning, it like comes relatively quickly and then it will go slower and slower and slower as you get going, but as you keep going, sorry, but this, you have the rest of your life to strength train and you, to get strong in certain places and certain exercises. Right. Like take that push up for example. It might not be happening today, but one day down the road, maybe a year from now, maybe two years from now, you'll be doing that push up from the floor. That was like, a, that's embarrassing. When, before we started with you, it's like, I can't do a single damn push up. I mean, you're probably not alone in the world, so that's okay. But I think people in my family think, you know, she's athletic and stuff. And it's like, from here down. <laughs> so I am reading mm -hmm. Peter Atia, Dr. Peter Atia's book, Outlive, which is like outstanding. It is so good. And I feel so good about what we have been doing because it is really checking... I take care of the cardio side of things, mm -hmm. but we are checking not just the strength things, but also stability. So he has a whole, you hear a lot about strength and hypertrophy, and I had to look that word up at the beginning of this. Muscle growth. <laughs> um, but he talks a lot about the lack of focus on stability, and I feel like that is something that we really addressed early on. And as a cyclist, I was kind of surprised at different things that you gave us early mm -hmm. that were where my knee was shaking or some things just weren't stable. So how much is that a part of how you guys are assessing how people progress? I mean, to me, that's a, that's a huge part of progression. Like some, when I first started, it was like all about the, oh, how, how are we looking? How much weight have we lost? And over the years, you kind of realize that well, someone comes in and they're very wobbly on one leg, like they can barely balance on one leg. Six months down the road, maybe they can just balance on that one leg now, or maybe they can do a single leg deadlift really, really well without falling over. Like that's a huge progression for someone to feel, again, safe and comfortable who was not stable in the first place. But when we're talking about strength and stability, let's say you're someone who can get their hands all the way above their head, but they don't feel safe up here, like it's right. very, very, very right. wobbly, right? That's like an end range motion yeah. there. So we could talk about stability in that end range or stability in that very small range up there. But that's also strength, right? You're gaining strength in that mm -hmm. one. So they're kind of interchangeable. 
Um, so when you're talking about stability specifically, I think you're talking about like balance more than anything, but in that, se in that sense. Well, one of the things that he talks about too is to make sure that you're focusing both on the concentric, which a lot of people do, mm -hmm. and that eccentric, which we do a lot with our four second, mm -hmm. so that that's under control and that it's not a stress on the joint either over time. And we, we've focused a lot on that. We focus on the eccentric strength a lot because that's where most of the strength happens. Um, but with something like a, let's say, we're, let's take a deadlift for example, at the, the pick up I think is the easiest part for most people. The hardest part is the eccentric where we're coming right, down, under right? Control. The hinge, exactly. Yeah. Same with that squat. Like it was, the hardest part was coming down in the right fashion rather than standing up. Right. So the eccentric for a lot of things is where the, is the hardest part of a movement. So people like to skip through that as fast as possible. And they like to do the concentric or the pick up. Right. Like, oh, I can pick it up, but I can't put it down. Because it feels powerful, exactly. right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's sort of the glory moment of the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so we can't, we can't leave the discussion about strength without talking about animal flow, which I had never heard about, mm -hmm. but which is part of <laughs> every workout that we do that you prescribe to us. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about what that is mm -hmm. and why we do it. So animal flow is what we consider quadrupedal movement training, big fancy terms for hands and feet in contact with the ground and moving around in as many directions as possible. So getting down onto the ground and on getting your hands and feet in contact with the ground is a, is a great way to make people feel really safe. It's a great way to make your body feel safe. So one, it allows us to open, sorry, get into new ranges that we normally wouldn't. Um, or our body might not feel safe getting into in an open chain movement. So open chain versus closed chain, simply like a bicep curl, moving a weight around yourself, right. so open chain movement. Whereas moving yourself around an object, so moving yourself around the floor, that's a closed chain movement. So when you get down onto the ground in that closed chain environment, it just makes people feel safe so they can open up into different ranges or more range than they had previously in an open chain environment. Having your hands and feet in contact with the ground as well, it's just gonna help with strength and stability down there, right? And as we, were, we talked about getting, or people getting into their 50s, 60s, getting up and off the ground is gonna be a big, big thing for them. So coming down to the ground, being able to move around confidently on the ground and then come back up off the ground is a, is a huge thing for people as they age. Right. But animal flow in specific is just there to help augment whatever you wanna do. Right, so it fills in the gap of training for a lot of people. So I use it. I love to use it for mobility, strength, and coordination for a lot of people because that's right. what people get out of it a lot. I see the the general population getting out of it. Yeah. Do you want to demonstrate a couple of things? Like, do you want to <laughs> do you want to demonstrate like a couple of beginner things? So si super simple things that I believe we started with were some base positions like beast and crab. So we started with beast. <clears throat> and then we started with some limb lifts from there. So we started by lifting our one foot at a time. And then we got to opposite hand and feet. And then we started, or will start if we haven't already, traveling forwards and backwards. So here you're getting the strength of getting off the, the knees off the ground and holding yourself up. So that's all the shoulders, arms, core. And then we're doing coordination by moving, lifting opposite hands, opposite foot, and we're coordinating by moving back forward and backwards. So you're getting a ton of different things there. And then we did crab as well, so the opposite of beast. And this is one of my favorites, simply because we already talked about this, getting out of our day-to-day -day position of here, right. and activating those shoulder blades down and back in a different position than they're normally used to in, like I said, our day-to-day -day lives. And because we're in that closed chain environment, these come back a little bit further than they would if we were just doing something else because we feel safe there. It takes a while for that, for those shoulders to like go back easily. Yeah, it does. But <clears throat> because you're on the floor and you have your hands and feet in contact with the ground, like we have a ton of sensory receptors there. So you're getting a ton of feedback. So your body picks those things up a little bit faster than it would in an open chain. Right. Okay. Movement. Yeah. Do you want to... I don't want to put you on the spot, but do you want to show us sort of like, w like a later version of crab, like where crab goes? 
So one of, the, one of the places it can go is we're working on this right now. Right. Was our crab reaches, right? So we set crab yeah. and then we we're going to do crab reach. So I'll go right arm crab reach. So one hand comes up in front of the face. Right. And then right now we're on our three point bridge. Right. We're working on bringing the hips up into what we call extension. So above the knee and above the shoulder. Right. So eventually we're going to reach the arm and rotate the head. So we stack the shoulders on top of one another. Yeah. And we come into the full crab reach. So right now my spine is into extension. It's rotated and then it's flexed laterally as well. And then we can come or return to crab. So there you're getting a nice little ringing out of the spine. So one of my favorite exercises is because we get to do something to the spine that it doesn't normally get ever. Right. Yeah. And you know, it looks simple and it takes it takes time mm -hmm. to move to work up to that for sure oh yeah for sure and, but you can break it down quite a bit as well right, which is right. which Into is one of the components. beauties of animal flow there's regressions and progressions everywhere yeah. yeah so okay let's talk about stage four we are i thought you know we'd be 12 weeks and goodbye yeah. well first i thought i'm coming once tell me what to do bye mm -hmm. <laughs> then it was 12 weeks but we're still together. So explain <laughs> what. It's just my winning personality is what it is. <laughs> so is, but it's a few other things too. <laughs> so um, can you, can you um, sort of describe what our, the next phase of this journey is that we're, that we're doing now? What we're in right now? So yeah, you, got, you did your, your, your 12 weeks and you picked up, picked up enough that you could go off on your own and you're working, mm -hmm. doing those two days of uh, strength training now, right, mm -hmm. on your own. So our next phase will be maintenance of that two days, mm -hmm. trying to make sure that you're recovering properly through those two days mm -hmm. um, with the mountain biking on top of that. Right. You know, I think that's gonna be one of the most important things for us anyway going forward, is being able to do all of the mountain biking that you love to do on top of the strength training, but getting the recovery. So that will be always the, the give and take of right. our strength training, basically. So what we're doing now mm -hmm. is instead of just going off on our own, we're, you're creating our monthly plans for us, what yeah. the exercises we're doing, mm -hmm. we're sharing videos from our gym. Exactly. So that yeah. you can continue to monitor what I'm doing wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or what you're doing right. Or what I'm doing right. Yeah. It happens from time to time. And so that's a nice intermediate. It's like, it's not, you know, you're full on and then nothing, you're on your own. Mm -hmm. I think it's a nice, now let's keep this going. I think that that's a good way. So a uh, couple of final questions here for you is, um, do you, let's say somebody's living in an area. Mm -hmm. We were just talking about before we, we started, we were talking about cottage country. Not everybody is, has the luxury of having a gym in their condo building. Mm -hmm. Not everybody has a gym in their town. Yep. So how do you feel about strength training coaches? And this, I think this really evolved through COVID, uh, where you're remote, but online together. I mean, my 40% of my business is still online from COVID. Is that right? Yeah, we've got, I've got people that don't live in the city anymore, so I never see them online. Um, I have people that, I used to see uh, twice a week in person that I haven't seen in person since we went online or since COVID because they, the, the, the way the new schedule has worked out, just it, they can't come down here anymore. Okay, so that's one objection now that people can, they, can, they have to wipe that off the board. Mm -hmm. They can't use that as an excuse. So what about if, uh, like, do you have to stock up a whole gym? Like, do you have to buy a range of kettlebells, a range of barbells? Um, I, I guess it would depend on your comfort level with things. So no, because we have a ton of, like your own body is in, an incredible tool, mm -hmm. right? So you can use that for workouts all the time. Plus we have animal flow that you can use for the entire hour as well, or whatever the, the time you've allotted to yourself for strength training is. Um, I think, if you're tight on space and you're, you don't want to like take up a whole bunch of, uh, of room with a bunch of kettlebells, dumbbells, things like that, right. the adjustable kettlebells and the adjustable dumbbells have been, game changer might be a, the wrong word, but it has been very beneficial to a couple of my clients 
so that they can get a variety of weights and they can get a, a variety of different exercises. You know, we bought, so we're lucky in our, our gym is relatively well stocked, mm -hmm. but we bought, I'm gonna do a little video on this, that handle that turns a, yeah. a dumbbell into a kettlebell. And I mean, it's not perfect, but it works. It works. Yeah. So, you'll, you know, you'll, I think for, with you guys, you'll, you'll max out past that at some point. Yeah. You, that we're, that like, will get too easy, too fast. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Let's say your mom or your dad was in a different city and mm -hmm. they were going to engage a strength training company or person. Mm -hmm. How would you tell them to find that person? Like, how do you know when it's a good fit? That's a good question. What should they be looking for? Or what should they be avoiding? One size, we talked about, does not fit all. So you're not gonna train someone who's never lifted a, or hasn't lifted a weight in the past 25 years and at 70 years old the same way you're going to train a bodybuilder or someone that's 20 but still hasn't lifted a weight in the last 10 years or something like that like those, you have to be able to have a different approach for everybody's capacity so someone who is willing to really write that specific prescription for you rather mm -hmm. than okay you should, you need to start here. This is what we're doing. We're only doing X, Y, and Z. And that's what strength training is. And like so many businesses, it's the people, the companies who have a process to reach their success mm -hmm. that are the companies that generally are the people you want to work with. And for you guys, and it's a really good recap of, I think, from my boneheaded approach to what <laughs> happened, which is, you know, an intake form where they're, where you're asking all kinds of different questions mm -hmm. to really get the lay of the land. Yeah. Assessing all of our various movement patterns, which he did. Then this prescription of exercises specifically for us mm -hmm. and taking into account our, you know, where we're strong, where we're weak mm -hmm. and where we have injuries and moving up gradually, learning movements and then having sort of a, a next phase too, so that it doesn't have to be all or nothing. We're either here working with you or you're on your own. Now we're in a different phase. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think to me that is ideal. And then also people who just really understand that, you know, as we get older, like stability and strength, all those things um, are just so important. So how I, it, have I forgotten something that is really important for sort of people in their 50s, 60s, 70s to know I just, about this? I think we said it already. It's, just, it's never too late. Right? Yeah. Just, just got to start moving. Find, find that thing you like to do and get to it. Like it yeah. just, just start moving, really. Yeah. Now, I avoided it. I was so good at avoiding this for so long. Yeah. And like, I like working out, mm -hmm. I'm not an, but I avoided this. <laughs> and now I, if I had started this, when I started mountain biking, I would have been a better mountain biker through my forties. Maybe. So yeah, yeah for sure. Cause it's already happening. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Well, now you're going to be a better mountain biker through the fifties. <laughs> yeah. 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 So Roshan, thank you so much. My pleasure. You're thank with you. Move Daily, but the website is Move Well Daily. Dot com. Yes. And the website has a lot of the philosophy that we're talked about today um, on it. Yeah. So even if you can't, if you're not here in Toronto, um, but I guess you could work online with people. On online works, like I said. Yeah. So uh, definitely check them out. You guys came to me through a recommendation from a friend. So, um, so check them out. Thanks again. Thank you. There we go. Good boy. Good boy.